Hold on for one minute. Okay, I believe everyone joined in. Let's begin. Now, today's letter, what we're going to discuss is a simple format of letter, okay? Now, the most required part in this, what is like, you will have to understand what kind of informations you need to add into this. You need to understand the target reader very well, because unless you understand the target reader in this type of letters, it will be very okay. Difficult. I believe everyone joined in. Just hold on. Let's begin. Why is it happening? Now, today's letter, what we're going to discuss Okay, hold on, there was an echo. Just one minute. Okay, perfect. Let's begin now. Okay. Now over here, what we need to understand over here is we need to understand the target reader well. Target reader, you need to understand the well. That means to whom you're writing the letter. Tomorrow, those who are writing the examination, please make sure you understand it very clear and you understand it very nicely that to whom you're writing, because Unless you understand to whom you're writing, it'll be really difficult for you to know what kind of information you need to add in your letter, like relevant or irrelevant. Relevant or irrelevant. So keep this very clear in your mind that you will have to make sure that you understand to whom you are writing, which is very important in your letter. And the reading technique, let's keep it the same. Okay, this is especially for people who are writing exam tomorrow, I'll just record this lesson as well so that I can send you the recordings as well. Now, reading technique of reading a letter should be the same what we have practiced all these two and a half months. Okay, you should not change your technique in the last moment because that will definitely hamper your understanding, which I really don't want you to take a risk. First one, read the first five lines. Now, people who are new, please understand, this is very important. Read the first five lines to get an understanding who is the patient? What is your position? Which is very important. You need to understand what is your position. It's more important. Also, you need to make sure that you also understand what is the scenario or what exactly is the scenario which is happening in the particular letter. So who is the patient? What is your position? And the overall idea, the name and age of the patient. You get it very clear, things will be really easy. Otherwise, things are going to be a little complex for you. Okay, this is more important for you to understand. After reading the first five lines, from there, directly move on to the last event which is given to you. Now, either you can move on to the last event or you can move on to the last, last five lines. Now, why do I say last event and last five lines? Please, let's understand this very clear. Last event means any date any last date which is given to you on the case note like we have case notes which has got multiple events in it so you will focus on the last event because the last event will tell you what is the current scenario now why you need to understand this because see there are some letters in which the diagnosis okay like for example if you remember last to last week we did a letter on patricia stylus now in patricia stylus what we had is the diagnosis was possible relapse of pericarditis 
wherein the patient was actually diagnosed with pericarditis six months ago. Now, in that letter, if you write, I'm writing to refer Patricia Stylus, who is diagnosed with pericarditis, you lose your point in content, you lose your point in clarity. Because she's not currently, you're not sending the patient for the diagnosis of pericarditis. You are sending the patient because she has a relapse of pericarditis. This is very important to understand the difference. Okay. Many people fail to understand the difference. Unless you understand this difference, it's going to be a little difficult for you to write a letter, which is most important. Okay. So understand the current scenario, whether is it a possible relapse? Like, for example, we have one more letter, which we have done earlier, that is Jack Mills, which was a psychiatric condition. Patient was uh, like diagnosed six months ago or 18 months ago, patient was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. And currently the patient represented with the possible relapse or decompensated schizophrenia. So in that case scenario, you cannot write in the first paragraph, patient is diagnosed with schizophrenia. You will have to write patient has a history. I'm writing to refer to a person who has a history of paranoid schizophrenia. This is very important to understand the technicality of this letter, of any letter which you write. Because if you don't understand to whom you're writing, the target reader, and don't understand the current scenario, it's going to be a real mess for you to understand which would be the relevant information as per the demand of the letter. You need to understand the demand of the letter, which is very important. Okay, so the last date will tell you what is the current scenario? What is the current diagnosis? You'll also be able to understand what is the purpose of writing? Along with the last date, you should also make sure that you read the writing task. I'm repeating this again and going slow. The reason is many of you are writing exam tomorrow or day after tomorrow. Please make sure when you're writing your letter, keep these points in your mind. Things will be easy for you. Purpose along with writing task and writing task, you get to know who is the target reader. You get to know the target reader's name. Okay, target reader's name and position. Once you understand, okay, I'm writing it to a general practice and I'm writing it to a psychiatrist, I'm writing to a so-and-so person, things will be really easy for you to understand. Okay, this is something is expected from you and I want all of you to follow this. Now, one more thing, please understand guys, we have, uh, we have trained you on letters writing to GP, letters writing to nurses, different nurses, letters writing to social worker. We have done letters writing it to an occupational therapist. We have uh, done. We have done letters writing it to uh, what you say, university nurse, okay, school nurse, university nurse, school nurse. We have done all these type of letters, okay. But understand, if you ever come across any target reader which you are not aware what to write, for example, music therapist. Like we had one letter, music therapist. Now, if the letter goes for music therapist. Many of the people get confused. Now, what should I do? I don't know. I've never written a letter about music therapists. Do not panic. The first thing you need to come across, like in the examination, you come across a situation where you're not so sure what to be done. The first response should be not to panic, relax, read the letter once again. Understand it, think, then respond. Because if you panic, you're going to lose a lot of time energy as well your brain will not be able to give you the productivity what you have done on the six months so if you ever come across a situation which you have never done relax and read it again think well what can i write to a music therapist what would a music therapist expect from me when i'm writing a letter simple it's you just have to differentiate whether it is a medical person or a non-medical person if it's a medical person, simple for you. If it's non-medical, remember social worker. How, what kind of information you add for a social worker? The same information we need. What is the purpose of this letter? Just focus on that. This is more important when you're writing a letter. Okay, please make sure this has to be done. Tomorrow when you're writing an examination or day after tomorrow when you're writing an examination, make sure whatever or whoever the target reader is. Think carefully. And if you get a letter with multiple dates and multiple events, do not panic. Think, how can I divide my letter into past events, present events, and future events? If I'm able to divide the dates into three different events, things are easy for me. I just have to find who is my target reader. I just have to find what is the purpose and why am I writing this? What is the main reason I'm writing this letter? Things would be really easy for you. Okay, now let's go for today's letter. Any doubt anyone has in terms of this, you can ask me. 
I'll clarify your doubts. Anyone? Okay. Now, since no doubt, I'll move on to the question paper today. Uh, many of you might have written this letter earlier, but I'm taking this because nowadays I can see very commonly these kind of letters that are coming in examination. Now, many of the people would think like, oh, this is not a nursing letter. Now, understand one thing. Nowadays, the examination, what's happening is the format remains the same. Okay. There are complex letters coming in. Now, the sample questions, what you see, the OET official, what we have for, that is a little lengthy. But rest of the sample responses, what we have available in the markets are very short letters. There is no point in practicing short letters unless you practice the complex ones. Because when you practice the complex ones and you get an easy letter, things would be really an easy cake for you, which is very important on aspect of actually clearing this exam. You need to make sure that you understand this very clear. Any complex letters, how to solve it? What kind of approach I need to when I have to solve this? That's something very important from your side. Okay, now, this is the letter what we are going to solve. Okay, now it says, we'll read as per our structure, what we have done. We'll go according to that. Amina Hamid, eight years, new patient at your clinic. Okay, today's date they have given, this is the first trend, 14, 10, 2012. We have to understand this case very well. Amina Ahmed, age 80 years, new patient at your clinic, parents, mother, um, Aima, housewife, father, talent, cab driver, brothers, Dalma, age at four, and Robble, age at two, family refugees from Somali in 2005. Have Australian citizenship, Amina and father, good understanding of English, mother has limited, and Amina had appendectomy two years ago, no known allergies. So we know it's going to be about a child who's just eight years old, Amina Ahmed. This has to be very clear. Then from here, we'll move on to the last event. Last event over here is 14, 10, 2012. Okay, always move on to the last event first. Here, subjective, which means what the patient said or what the parents or relative said. Both the parents were very concerned reported amina lethargic and listless listless means very restless tired vomited twice last night and headaches worse objective what you found the investigations revealed wbc 18000 left shift now you can ignore this left shift because it is not complete okay urinary function report normal temperature 40 point so it is a raised temperature pulse we can see tachycardia 110 per minute maculopapular rash over the legs nick stiffness is present Assessment, you have found meningococcal meningitis. So this is your today's assessment. So they have given today's date is 14, 10, 2012. And today's assessment says meningococcal meningitis. Okay. So from the last event, you got to know, okay, this was the current trouble, the current scenario. You got to know what is the diagnosis that is meningococcal meningitis. You got to know what is the plan. The plan says urgent admission to the emergency pediatric unit. Brisbane General Hospital for further investigation and treatment. Meningococcal meningitis. So think what kind of information you will add and what kind of structures you would involve into this particular question. And we have given a pencil in IV stat, IV given as a stat dose. Okay. Now you are a GP. Now don't, please don't consider yourself GP when you're writing. Keep in your mind as a nurse. See, the target reader remains the same for both of you. Okay, because we are not writing the letter on the point of view of like our own profession. We are writing it in on the point of view of your target reader. Who is your target reader? We have to understand his point of view. Based on that, we have to give out information. So here we are writing it to a duty registrar, emergency pediatric unit, Brisbane General Hospital. What is the reason patient is suffering from meningococcal meningitis? But the immediate response, what is required for that IV stat dose that you have already done. Okay, so you think whether what is the way you can write it. This letter can be written both the ways as an emergency structure or as a normal structure. Both the ways it's okay because the initial initial management what is to be done that is already given. Patient was suffering from these things from the a long time of symptoms was there. Right now you found the symptoms and you confirmed it and you are sending it to emergency pediatric unit. So both the structure is completely fine. Now the requirement is how to choose the information. What kind of information we would add into this letter? which is important, which can be ignored. This is something you need to understand from your part. Okay, now I'll give you five minutes. I, I have sent you the question to all of you. You can just go through the question which is given to you in the group. You can uh, 
see it and you can prepare. I'll give you exactly five minutes to prepare. Then we'll start with our discussion. And today at the end, I'll send the sample answer to each one of you personally, okay? Because I don't have it on the presentation. I'll send it to you personally. In the evening batch, I'll be recording the lecture again. In that, I'll be showing a presentation as well. So I'll send you that as well. So I'll send you both. So everyone needs to mark your attendance in the group and I'll make sure each one of you personally, I'll send you the sample answer. Perfect. I'll give you five minutes from now, since there are no doubt, I've got 14 people over here. Make sure everyone prepare and then we have a quick discussion. I want you guys to participate because participation will give you a more learning curve where you will understand more, where your questions will be answered. You will make mistakes, but that will be corrected. Later in the examination, you will not do any mistake. Okay, that, that would be a benefit for you. And I'll give you exactly five minutes from now, go through it. Okay, last two minutes, quickly go through it. Then whoever is participating will have to unmute. Okay, let's begin now. Anyone who can tell me what can be the first paragraph? What can be the first paragraph? What can be the diagnosis and what can be the purpose? Anyone who have gone through the letter? Anyone who wish to participate? Unmute your audio, please. Saima, 
anyone otherwise i'll have to pick up by name any idea what can be the first paragraph what can be the diagnosis and what can be the purpose of this letter yes let me bless you uh, sir i think it is an emergency letter okay both ways can be considered okay uh, the background is i guess yes i am what can be the answer I am writing this letter to refer Amina Ahmed uh, for urgent admission at emergency pediatric unit uh -huh. at, at your hospital following uh -huh. meningococcal meningitis. Okay, following meningococcal meningitis. Okay, what else would require uh, urgent assessment? For further, for further line of treatment. Yeah, line of treatment is also fine. So I am writing to refer Amina who is present with signs and symptoms of meningococcal meningitis for. for the line of treatment or for urgent assessment and management it's up to you any of the ways you can use it no problem what about the second paragraph then mm -hmm. now if you are considering as it as an emergency letter like if you are using the structure of emergency then definitely it's going to be today's date mm -hmm. right 14 10 2012 yeah. since we can think as a life threatening situation now what all information will write to be here mm -hmm. what all information mm -hmm. this letter can be written both the ways it's completely fine because this is yeah. a long standing symptom this is a long standing symptom like initially she had fever yeah. it was considered as viral infection later she again came with the same complaint now third time she has come you have given the normal dose which is already done though it is written that it's an urgent admission mm. but we can consider it as a normal event mm. as well. no problem because uh, this will be treated at the hospital and it's a long standing symptom it's not a sudden symptom or sudden life threatening it's a long standing symptom so even if you consider it as a normal letter it's completely fine no problem no markdown for that okay both the ways it's fine now if it is with the normal event like normal we consider it as a normal event and if we started that way then you would start it from here otherwise if you're starting it with the different structure then you will start it with 14 10 2012 okay now let's imagine like if we take it from the beginning what all information we can take first of all we need to say that what is the initial background so in terms of a background she is a child where like uh, you have over here mother aima housewife father cab driver four and there are two siblings as well so it's a family of five so you can say she is a first child of a family of five which includes her parents and her two younger siblings we need to say that they are not from here because you don't know what the history is from which country that can be a predisposing factor because patient is suffering from meningococcal meningitis so that can be something referred to a predisposing factor so they have come from somali that's an important information and when treating a patient we need to really have an understanding like whether the patient can communicate or whether the relative can understand what you are trying to say so here amina and her father have good understanding of english but mother has got basic so you can say that amina and father even though they are from somali amina and her father have a basic understanding of english then initially on 9 10 2012 that was the initial visit when patient came patient came with complaints of fever runny nose mild cough and loss of appetite she was unable to attend school okay even if you don't say that it's completely fine initially we can see the pulse and everything was normal but the temperature is 39.4 so that information will have to add she was febrile with a temperature of 39.4 and a pulse rate of 85 that's all we need over here there is no rash no stick stiffness anyways we are going to write it in the next line about the stiffness so even if you don't write it over here there was no rashes or neck stiffness it's completely fine but even if you add it because the letter is a small one even if you add it there is no markdown over here but this one cvs rs and abdominal normal we don't need this okay now since there were pulse and temperature and these all symptoms were there what had happened we have uh, advised her to keep home from school rest and paracetamol thrice a day and review in 3 days if no improvement and the assessment made was viral infection okay what else we did anything else we did over here we need to say unable to attend fewer rashes okay i think we have added all these information what has happened initially then the next visit what all we can add do we need to merge we'll have to see whether we can merge it or not i mean not well on the second visit on the subsequent visit patient was difficult to control temperature the same thing the fever was same 13 there is nothing significant change the complaints are same 
no rash, no sickness, neck stiffness. You have prescribed her with brufen 200 mg as required and some blood investigations were ordered. So based on the symptoms, patient was ordered with uh, brufen 200 mg and blood and urine tests were ordered for the patient. So there are only two information over here. So we can merge it with the previous one. 9, 10 and 12, 10, we can write it together. Then comes on presentation today. On presentation today, what happened? We can see subjective patient reported being lethargic and less less. So you can see on presentation today, Amina became lethargic and less less. Apart from that, she vomited twice last night and had a worsening headache. On examination, that's your objective data. You found that she has got a temperature of 40.2, 40.2 pulse rate of 110 per minute. Also, maculopapular rash over the legs with neck stiffness. Okay, rest all reports were approximately normal with a slightly raised level of WBC, but that's not that important. It's, it's a very marginal, so it's completely fine. Then, what else we can find over here? Anything else we can find which we have missed out? Anything which you feel need to be written, which we have missed out? So, the paracetamol rule, is, isn't that important to mention? Like, nothing was it? the difficult to control temperature yes, with paracetamol. Yes, yes, yes. Good, good point. Yes, that's important. There was one drug which did not work. Okay, I'll tell you one thing. One drug which did not work. Okay. Prescribe Brufin 200 mg as required, but there was one drug which did not work. We will always mostly add the information for the drug which has been very effective. Okay. This comes as a neutral information. Even if you don't add it, there is no markdown for that. Okay. Whoever asked me that question. Okay. Perfect. Anything else? What we need to add over here? Any doubt? Any any anything which you feel need to be added more or we missed out? Good point, but uh, you have shown. We have ordered the blood test. We sent the patient. We found that reported amina lethargic and listless. Urinary function and things were normal. Meningococcal meningitis was diagnosed, arranged urgent admission. That is what the scenario is all about. So then last you can write, please note or off note. There is one thing we have to add, pencil and IV stat dose given, which is not mentioned. So this information you can add it in the last paragraph. Then based on the above, patient would require urgent admission and management in your facility. If you need any further clarification, please do not hesitate to contact me. This is how you will write this letter. Any doubt you can ask me. Now today the sample answer I'll not be able to show you. You have marked the attendance. I'll send it to you personally, each one of you. You will receive the sample answer. You can go through it, understand it, and then you can write the letter. Okay, any doubt, please ask. Anyone. Perfect. Since no doubt, that's all for today.